Welcome back to Getting Nerdy MTG. I'm the Possum. Today we got a deck tech for you. This is for Safara Sky's Blade. Uh, this is actually the first commander deck I ever built. Uh, I have come across one other deck list. Uh, just when I first put this together, I looked. The way that they built it was uh, White Weenie. Uh, with the basic idea of cast a bunch of small creatures. Uh, boy, you can get Safara out just as quick as possible. But, uh, as usual with these, I'm going to show you the price lists for the copies I have, as well as the cheapest versions of the cards available, if you do choose to build it. Uh, this is actually an inner sleeve. Uh, custom inner sleeve that was given to me as a gift for the card. But we'll start with Safara. Uh, she's normally four and white, 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 so a total of seven to cast. For a 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink creature uh, that gives all other flying creatures I control indestructible. Uh, this deck is almost entirely flying creatures. So having her on the board does a lot uh, because two people do tend to kill her as quickly as possible. Uh, it's good that she actually has an alternate casting cost of one white and tapping four untapped creatures with flying can cast her. Uh, typically with this deck, I always hard cast her the first time. Uh, and she, just because most of my flyers are fairly expensive themselves. But then after that, I can recast her multiple times fairly cheaply. Uh, now, like I said, the other deck list I've seen of this was Mono White Flying Weenies. Uh, I went a little bit of a different route. Uh, I call this Board Wipe Tribal. And we'll get into that, why I call it that here in a little while. But uh, we're going to start out with the creatures in the deck. Now, I have 23 creatures. 21 of those fly. 19 of those happen to be angels. Uh, starting out, we have Giada, Font of Hope. Uh, I'm actually in the process of working on a deck list where I'm going to take this deck apart completely and rebuild it around Giada uh, just because I think it's a pretty awesome angel. It's a uh, one and a white for a 2-2 two -two flying vigilance. That's fairly irrelevant because I, I don't intend on actually attacking with her uh, if there's any chance whatsoever that she would die. But the important part is anytime an angel enters, it enters with an additional 1-1 one, one counter for each angel I already control. So if all I have on the board is Giada, I play another angel, it enters with a 1-1. One, one. If I have, and then the next angel I play enters with a 2-2 two, two, and it will scale fairly quickly. Uh, she can also tap to add a white to cast an angel. Uh, Sunblast Angel, this is actually one of 11 mass removal spells in the deck, which is why I call it Board Wipe Tribal. Uh, this happens to be stapled onto a creature, but for four, white, white, I get a 4-4 Flying Angel. When it enters, destroy all tapped creatures. Chancellor of the Annex, um... Most people hate to see this card revealed on turn one. Uh, it tends to slow them down a lot. This deck does a lot to slow my opponents down uh, just because it is a fairly expensive deck to play mana-wise. Uh, case in point, four white, 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 so another seven drop creature. Uh, but this one's a five, six angel. I can reveal it from my opening hand, and each of my opponent's first spells of the game is one extra. Uh, once it's on the battlefield, 
every spell they play is one extra. Resplendent Angels, one of the cheaper creatures in the deck for one white and white. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer. Uh, on each end step, if I've gained five or more life, I get a 4-4 four, four Angel with Vigilance. Uh, that should happen a lot in this deck, considering a lot of the creatures have life link, as well as some other life gain uh, abilities, uh, other things the deck does to gain life. But I mean, just the commander is a 7-7 seven, seven life link. So, uh, also for six mana till end of turn, Resplendent gets plus two, plus two and gains life link. That's not something I hardly, I mean, that, that is something I hardly ever do. It just, I've got other things I need to be spending six mana on. Archangel of Thune. I mentioned that I gain a lot of life with this deck, but for five mana, I get a three, four flying life link creature. Uh, this one actually does have the reminder text for life link. Uh, damage dealt by this creature, I gain that much life. The important part with Thune is anytime I gain life, I put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature I control. Now that's one counter per instance of life gain. If I attack with three lifelink creatures, when I gain life, that's three different instances. Each creature I control will get three 1-1 one, one counters. Sarah's Guardian. For six mana, four white and white, I get a fly, uh, five five flying vigilance that gives all my other creatures vigilance. Uh, you're going to see a theme here. Yes, a lot of these creatures are angels, but none of them are in here just as flying creatures. Pretty much everything not only flies, but does something else as well, uh, which they should considering the mana costs. Uh, angelic Skirmisher. For four white and white, so this one's six. I get a four four flyer that on each combat, all of my creatures get either first strike, vigilance, or life link. For three and a white, I get Angel of Finality, a three four flyer that when it enters, it exile all cards from one of my opponent's graveyards. Requiem Angel for five and a white, a five five flyer. Then anytime a non spirit I control dies, I get a one one flying spirit. So one of my angels dies, which will happen, uh, especially if I don't have my commander on the field. Uh, one of my angel dies, it's replaced by another flyer. Righteous Valkyrie for two and a white. This is a big angel payoff in the deck. Uh, a two, four flyer that any time an angel or cleric enters the battlefield under my control, I gain life equal to its toughness. Uh, don't have a lot of clerics. I'm not sure that I have any in all honesty, but I do have, like I said, 19 angels. Uh, then as long as I have seven or more life than, or seven life more than my starting life total, my creatures get plus two, plus two. So that gets turned on fairly quickly as well. Shattered Angel, three white and white, three, three flyer. Land enters the battlefield under my opponent's control. I can gain three life. So this is one of the, uh, life gain abilities that the deck has and bear in mind with this an Archangel of Thune let me grab Archangel of Thune again with these two on the field an opponent plays a, lot, uh, a land which they kind of have to do I gain three life every one of my creatures gets a 1-1 one, one counter Avacyn, Angel of Hope, 
five, white, white, white. So eight calls to cast, but it's an eight, eight flying vigilant angel. That gives all of my permanents indestructible. It's a little redundancy with my commander's ability. Baneslayer Angel, this is a, a full art foil copy of it, but uh, for three white and white, have a 5-5 five, five flying, first strike, lifelink, and protection from demons and from dragons. That part hasn't really come into play a whole lot, but flying, first strike, and lifelink's not too bad for five mana. Victory's Herald, a 4-4 four, four for three white, white, and white, so six mana. It flies, and when it attacks, all of my attackers gain flying and lifelink. Uh, like I said, most everything already flies, but this makes sure everything has lifelink as well. Emerius Shepherd, five white and white for a 4-4 four, four flyer with landfall. In this case, land enters under my control. I can return a permanent from my graveyard to my hand, or a non-land permanent, excuse me. Uh, if that land is a plains, which I've got quite a few of, the deck is mono white, I can put that permanent onto the battlefield. Basically this says play a land get a creature out of my battlefield, I'm out of my graveyard and onto the battlefield. Angelic Arbiter, this is one of the spells I mentioned that slows down my opponents. For five white and white, I get a five, six flyer. This says my opponents can either attack with creatures or cast spells. One or the other, they can no longer do both. Aegis Angel, it's a 5-5, five, five, 4 white, white. Uh, it's a flyer. When it enters, I pick another permanent I control. That permanent has indestructible as long as I have Aegis Angel. Typically, I will play this after my commander is already on the field. I'll name Sephora Sky's Blade. So Safara has Indestructible as long as I have Aegis Angel. Aegis Angel has Indestructible as long as I have Safara. And then by having Safara, all of my flyers are Indestructible. Uh, shuts down a lot of decks. It shuts down dragons. Uh, pretty much any kind of creature decks in general. Just because... I can block them all day long and my stuff doesn't die. Uh, Angel of Vitality, two and a white for a 2-2 two -two flyer. So this is one of the cheaper flyers in the deck. Uh, if I gain life, gain that much plus one. Uh, triggers a lot, just because I do gain a lot of life. Angel of Vitality gets plus two, plus two, as long as I have 25 or more life. Bear in mind, you start out with 40. So as long as I haven't already started taking hits, this is a 4-4 flyer. Acroma Vision of Ixador. Five white and white for a 6-6 six, six flying first strike vigilance trample. Beginning of combat, the beginning of each combat until end of turn, each of my other creatures gets plus one, plus one for basically each keyword ability they have. Uh, in the case of a Chroma, oh, it says each other creature. I don't think I've ever noticed that. So a Chroma would not pump herself. But all of my flyers are going to have flying, obviously. They're also going to have indestructible because of my commander. So just based on that, everything's getting plus two, plus two. Uh, if everything has lifelink, that's another plus one, plus one. 
uh, have the creature that gives everything vigilance. That's another uh, plus one, plus one. Uh, the one that lets me choose a keyword and give everything that keyword. That's another one. Uh, so this actually will make all of my flyers fairly large for each attack. Potomac, Distinguished Advocist. Uh, this is basically in there because it's a two drop, two two flyer. So it gives me a creature on the board a little earlier in the game. Uh, the other ability he has uh, for two, 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 two three flyer, lands on the battlefield and lands in graveyards, can't be targeted my, by my opponents. My opponents also can't play lands from their graveyards. So a little bit of a, a niche ability, but it does come in, it does come in handy occasionally. Sarah Ascendant is a 1-1 one, one monk for one white. I uh, still don't quite understand why this card isn't banned in Commander. Mm, excuse me. Uh, just because a 6-6 six, six flying life linker for one mana Seems a little broken for me, or broken to me. Uh, but hey, I don't make the ban list, and they say this is perfectly fine. So I'm definitely going to play it. As long as you have 30 or more life, it gets that bump. As I mentioned earlier, Commander, you start off at 40. And on top of that, this is a life gain deck. I can swing with this on turn two. And I'm already up to 30, up to 46. Mangara the Diplomat for three and a white. Uh, this is one of the few card draw spells that I've, or card draw enablers I have. Uh, I said four mana for a two four with lifelink. When an opponent attacks with Creatures, if two or more of those creatures are coming at me or a planeswalker I control, I draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, I draw a card. Mm, excuse me. Uh, card draw is not something I get to do a lot of in this set, uh, in this deck. Bishop of Wings, 1-1. Uh, I'm sorry, a 1-4 for white, white. Angel enters the battlefield, I gain four life. My angel I control dies, get a one one spirit. Uh, so this will definitely be going in the angel deck uh, once I swap it over to Giada. Uh, we're into our board wipes or mass removals. Uh, like I said, this is what I consider a board wipe tribal deck. Uh, According to a certain podcast and YouTube channel that I actually watch, uh, the norm for board wipes now is I should have, I believe it is two, three at the most. Uh, I went with 11 just because I like them all for different reasons. Uh, of the 11 board wipes, one of which is actually stapled to a creature, 10 of these hit creatures or have the abilities to hit creatures. Two can hit artifacts and enchantments. And then I have one multicolor, uh, which can also hit planeswalkers. Um, starting with the multicolor, Ravnica at War for three and a white. Exile all multicolored permanents. Uh, this is a mono white deck. So this does, this is very, very one-sided. It doesn't hurt anything of mine. Uh, part of the reason why I'm comfortable running so many board wipes is because typically all of my creatures are going to be indestructible. Um, plus, like I said, of the 11 board wipes, they all have different options, different things that they can do at the given time. Uh, and also because if I'm going up against certain decks... By the time I get my first or second creature on the board, I'm already getting overrun. Um, elf ball is a thing. Elf ball will have 
20 or 30 creatures on the fo on the board within just a few turns. And I don't care how many angels I get, how much life I'm gaining, I'm probably dead if they get that much of a board. So board wiping early before I've even started to establish sometimes does happen. But, uh, here we've got Cleansing Nova for three white white. This one, I either ex either destroy all the creatures or all the artifacts and enchantments. Uh, Heliod's Intervention, X, white, white. I can choose to gain life instead of destroying anything. Uh, if I do that, I will actually gain twice X life. So if I cast this for, say, eight, I'll gain 12 life or I can destroy X targets, target artifacts and or enchantments. So if there's just a few that are troublesome, I can get rid of them and leave mine intact. Uh, or I can take pretty much all of them out if I have enough mana. Austere commands one of the more versatile ones for four white and white, I get to choose two. Uh, destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures, convert a mana cost three or less, which does get tokens, or destroy all creatures, convert a mana cost four or greater. So if I want all the creatures gone, I can choose large and small. Uh, or say I don't have my commander out, I want to leave the big, big creatures alone, alone and not hurt them at all. Uh, but my opponent is playing Elf Ball, and I need, you know, 150 Elves gone. That would fall under Creatures Convert a Mana Cost 3 or less. Slash the Ranks is 3 White White. Destroy all creatures and Planeswalkers except for Commanders. So with this one, Safara would be the only one of my creatures that would die. Actually, Safara makes all of my other creatures indestructible, so none of them die. With a normal board wipe, she would still die, and then I would have to re, uh, recast her. Would slash the ranks, Safara gets to stick around as well. Shatter the sky for two white white. Each player who controls a creature power four or greater draws a card, then destroy all creatures. So this is one of the few instances of card draw that I have. Vanquish the Horde. Uh, this is real handy against decks like Elf Ball. Uh, six white, white, destroy all creatures, but it's one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Uh, so against elves specifically, uh, or any kind of a deck that runs just super fast, lots of little creatures. Uh, this ends up being a two drop board wipe. Wrath of God. It's a classic. I had to put it in here for two white and white. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. This is kind of the OG board wipe. Uh, so I just, I, I had to play it. Settle the Wreckage. Uh, I believe this is the only instant board wipe I have. Sorry, we don't need enchantments yet. Uh, for two white and white, exile, exile all attacking creatures, target player controls. That player searches his or her library for that many basic lands, puts them on the battlefield tapped, shuffles his or her library. This is basically someone is swinging all out to try to finally knock me out. Uh, or if they're trying to knock out an opponent that I choose to be generous and save, uh, they swing all out to actually be able to get the job done and then all of their creatures go away and they're now dead whenever someone chooses to attack them. Uh, it ramps them, yes. It gets all of their basics on the battlefield if they have any in the deck still. Uh, however, they have no creatures left, so they're not able to rebuild theoretically before they're knocked out of the game. Uh, Fumigate for three white and white. 
Like I said, this deck does gain a lot of life. Destroy all creatures, gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. And our enchantments. We have seven enchantments, uh, 10 artifacts, and then one enchantment artifact. For whatever reason, they thought it should be both. This is where I get a lot of my ramp from. A little bit of my card draw. And in this case, a little bit more life gain, Righteous Cause. Three white white, whenever a creature attacks, I gain one life. This pairs very well with Archangel of Thune because with the two of them on the battlefield, I swing with, we'll say, four creatures that's four separate instances of life gain. So each of my creatures will get four 1-1 one, one counters from Thune, and that's before the damage is actually done. So it says attack, instantly get bigger. Authority of Consoles. Uh, this is another one to slow down my opponents. Uh, Authority of Consoles is one white for an enchantment. Creatures my opponent control enter tapped. And when are they, whenever a creature enters under their control, I gain one life. Smother and Tithe is just straight up ramp for three and a white. Opponent draws a card. If they don't pay two mana, I get a treasure. I can sack that treasure or tap and sack that treasure for one mana of any color. So it's either going to slow them down because every spell is costing two more or ramp me up. Same result, I'm able to catch back up. Dawn of Hope, one and a white, enchantment. Whenever you gain life, you can pay two and draw a card. So this is another one of the few instances I have of card draw. Uh, this is also a little bit of a mana sink, not that I you know, usually need something to put the mana in. But if I have four white, I'm, or four, one of which being a white that I'm not using, I can get a 1-1 one, one white soldier with lifelink. Leyline of Sanctity. Just a little bit of protection against certain decks, but for two and a white, or two white and white, excuse me, uh, or free if it's in my opening hand, I have Hexproof. Uh, Deafening Silence is another one that people hate seeing on turn one. One white mana. Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. Yes, I have non-creature spells, but for the most part, I'm a creature deck. Uh, I may do one non-creature each turn, but that's usually all I'm going to, to even have in hand. Land tax is another one, uh, one white enchantment. Uh, this is not ramp. It does not actually put additional lands onto the battlefield. It doesn't have me more mana than I normally would on a given turn schedule. What this does, though, is guarantee my land drops because of each upkeep, if an opponent has more lands than me, search my library for up to three basics put them in my hand, then shuffle. That doesn't count as my draw step, so I will still draw. So I have had games where my opponents quit playing lands just so this wouldn't trigger, but that's fine. They've now slowed down to, to my pace. Uh, in cases where they do play their lands, I not only am guaranteed my one land per turn, so that I can stay on schedule, but it will also thin out my deck and I end up pulling lands out and just dumping them in the graveyard because once I've got six or eight lands on the board, I don't need any more. And with other ramp things that I have, I can actually do a lot with less lands, but I don't need to be drawing lands every turn. I need to draw my other spells. 
our first artifact, Swift Foot Boots. Everybody knows boots. Um, it's an equipment, two to cast, one to equip. Quick creature gets hexproof and haste. Lightning Greaves is the older version of that. Two to cast, zero to equip. Equip creature gets haste and shroud. So with this, I can't target my stuff either, but I don't really target my creatures much. Aetherflux Reservoir, this is a, I've seen spell or decks that actually worked around this card in that they would cast a ton of spells, gain a ton of life, and then activate Aether Flux. The life gain that I get from this is very minimal because I don't usually do more than one, two spells a turn at most, just because my stuff is fairly expensive. Uh, but what this does is give me an alternate win con, also a little bit of a safety net. Uh, once I get to 50 life, which can happen very quickly, uh, this gives me a safety. Nobody wants to swing in at me because I can, in return, activate Aether Flux. Yes, I'll go to a lower life total, but they're out of the game. I might get third out of the four of us, but they get last. It's a very gorgeous extra planner lens. Yes, there are cheaper copies of this card available, but uh, this is the Kaladesh Masterpiece version. Decided a, a while back I wanted to start collecting these. It's a slow process. I think I have uh, four different ones now, but Extra Planner Lens is an artifact for three mana with imprint. It enters, exile a land I control. Whenever a land of the same name as the exile card is tapped, it produces one mana to his or her mana pool of any type that land produced. Uh, I've got a lot of basic lands in this deck, uh, specifically planes. This makes all of my planes produce two mana. Yes, it pumps my, or it helps my opponents as well, but my opponents may have a few planes in the deck. Uh, I have 29. So it's definitely going to do more for me than them. Uh, Mana Crypt. I actually got this out of a Mystery Booster sealed event. Got very lucky. This was my in my first pack. But zero cost artifact. Tap it to produce two white. No, I'm sorry, two colorless. Have to read my own cards today. Mm, excuse me. But tap for two color, uh, two generic. I'm screwing it up again. I tap for two colorless specifically. Uh, the downside is, is that on each upkeep, I flip a coin. In my case, I usually just roll a dice, uh, roll a die. If I lose the flip or coin roll, or roll, Mana Crypt does three damage to me. Now you would think that in the life gain deck, that's pretty inconsequential. Unfortunately, when this deck isn't cooperating, I have died to my own Mana Crypt. It's never a good feeling. Uh, you don't build a commander deck without putting Soul Ring in it. It's just, it's a given. Um, one generic to cast, you can immediately tap it for two colorless. Gauntlet of Power, five to cast. But when it enters, choose a color. Obviously I choose white. Creatures of the chosen color get one plus one plus one. When a basic when a basic land is tapped for that color, it produces an additional mana of that color. So this also makes my planes tap for two. Heraldic banner, a three drop artifact. Enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus O. Oh. Add one mana of the chosen color. Obviously, 
I choose white. Mind Stone, two to cast. I can tap it to add a colorless, or I can pay one, tap and sacrifice Mind Stone to draw a card. So early game, it's ramp. Later game, I can cycle it in for, uh, for a different card since I no longer need the additional mana it can produce. Cosmos Elixir. Uh, this is actually the pre-release copy of it, but for four to cast. Beginning of my end step, I draw a card if my life total is greater than my starting life. Otherwise, I gain two life. Uh, typically, with this on the board, it means I'm drawing a card every end step. Spear of Heliod for one white and white. This is the legendary enchantment artifact. Uh, creatures I control get one, one. For one white, white, I can tap this artifact and destroy a creature that dealt damage to me this turn. And, and that is repeatable. I can do that every single turn if necessary. Uh, on to the Instants and sorceries, uh, these of course are not including the mass removals. Uh, I kind of had them their own category all by themselves. But starting out the instance, we have the first of two of our spot removal spells, swords to plowshares, uh, one white, exile target creature, its controller, excuse me, gains life equal to its power. So this exiles at instant speed. That's the important part. This is at instant speed. Exile the big daddy. Yes, my opponent gains some life, but it's worth it to get rid of something that is going to cause me a lot of grief. Uh, Path to Exile is another version of basically the same card. Uh, this is textless, obviously, but Path to Exile for one white uh, is the same exile target creature at instant speed. Only this case, instead of gaining life, they search their library for a basic land. Rally of Wings for one and a white. Untap all creatures I control. Creatures I control with flying get plus two, plus two till end of turn. I think I've mentioned pretty much all the creatures in this deck fly. So this untaps all of my stuff. I can do this during combat on my phase to get in some extra damage and to get everything untapped to have they able to block on my turn. Or as a combat trick, when my opponent swings into me because I'm, uh, I'm all tapped and seemingly open to an attack, I can cast this, untap all of my stuff, it's able to block, and it's also now a little bit bigger. Gideon's Sacrifice is one white instant. Choose a creature or planeswalker I control. I don't have any planeswalkers, but choose a creature, all damage that would be dealt to me and permanents I control dealt to the chosen permanent instead, if it's still on the battlefield. Where this comes in handy is bear in mind all of my flyers are gonna be indestructible. So I just channel everything dealt to me and everything else into that one flyer. This gets around the idea of trample because I didn't block it. Trample says that any damage, or trample says that when the creature is blocked, Lethal goes to that creature, but any additional goes on a controller. Or in the case of this, I didn't block it. I took all of the damage. I just turned around and directed it all at a creature that is still not going to die. Uh, invoke the Divine. This is spot removal for an artifact or enchantment. Two and a white. Destroy artifact or enchantment and gain four life. Uh, a little pricey, but 
I get the life gain as well. Which, like I said, I do get payoffs for that. Pollen Lullaby. Uh, what could be better than a white fog? Well, a white spore cloud. For one and a white, prevent all combat damage dealt this turn, then clash with an opponent. To clash, we each reveal top card of our library. Player with the higher mana cost for that card wins the clash. Uh, we've mentioned my stuff's fairly expensive. My average cost in this deck is actually 3.9, so almost 4 on the average. I've got a good chance at winning the clash. If I do, if I win, then my opponent's creatures don't untap on their next untap step. Dawn Charm. One in a white. Uh, this can be a couple of different things. I can either prevent all combat damage, so it's basically a fog, or I can regenerate a targeted creature. So something that was going to die, I can now uh, save. Or I can counter a spell that targets me. So doesn't get needed a whole lot, but it's definitely handy when I do have it. Enlightened Tutor. This is one of two tutors in the deck. Uh, for you new people, tutor basically means search the library for something. Uh, in some cases, you put it in your hand. In some cases, you put it on top. But either way, you get to search for a given card under whatever stipulations. In the case of Enlightened Tutor, uh, one white for an instant. I have to search for an artifact or enchantment card. Uh, reveal it, shuffle library, put that card on top. So I'll do this on my opponent's end step. That way I can immediately draw the card. Our other tutor is two and a white, and this one's sorcery speed. Uh, it has to be an enchantment card, but I reveal that card and immediately put it into my hand. Revoke Existence, this is another targeted removal for artifact or enchantment, only it's one and a white and it exiles that target instead of destroys it. So there's no way of getting it back. Finale of Glory, green, white, and white. I think I've cast this spell where X was less than 10, maybe once, because I was in pretty dire need of creatures on the board. But I create X 2-2 white soldiers with vigilance. If X is 10 or more, I also create that many 4-4 angels with flying and vigilance. So if X is 10, basically meaning I dumped 12 mana into this spell, I get 10 angels, and 1010 10 soldiers. So I, I can put uh, we said four, 60 power on the board for 12 mana. Which seems like a lot, but in this deck, to give you an idea, I have had 6 mana as early as turn 2. And from there, it can kind of snowball. Into the lands. I said there are 29 basic planes in the set. Uh, it's a mono de colored deck. I don't need cup mana of different colors. Might as well just use basic planes. That comes in handy with the land tax as well as the uh, extra planner lens. But into our other lands, we also have a field of ruin. Tap to add a colorless or pay two. Tap and sacrifice it. Destroy a non-basic land. Uh, each player searches for a basic and puts it onto the battlefield. Uh, I've actually done this after my opponent had just tutored and put the best card in his deck on top of his library. Uh, I made him shuffle. 
Myriad Landscape. It enters tapped. I can tap to add one generic or pay two, tap and sacrifice to go get two basics that share a land type. They're going to share a land type because they're going to all be planes. Ancient Tomb is just ramp. Uh, it's a single land that taps for two colorless. Now every time you tap it, it does deal two damage to you. But this is a life gain deck, so that's usually not an issue. Plus the idea is if it becomes a problem to where I need to not be losing that much life, by then I should have other lands on the board. This just kind of helps get me ahead of the curve a little bit. Secluded Step. Enters tapped. I can tap it for a white. Or if I don't need it as a land, I can pay one, discard it, and draw a different card. Emeria the Sky Ruin. It enters tapped, but on my each upkeep, if I control seven or more planes, as I've said, there's 29 in the deck. If seven of them are on the battlefield, I get a target creature from my graveyard to the battlefield. This is every upkeep. So some pretty decent recursion. Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. I can tap it for one, or I can pay two, tap it, choose a color. I would choose white. I get mana of the amount of my devotion to that color. So to give you an idea, my Safara uses three whites to cast. So with her on the board and nothing else, my devotion is three. If I have, let's see. I have Safara, Emeria Shepherd, and Victory's Herald on the field. My devotion to white is eight. So Nykthos, once I get rolling a little bit, Nykthos can really do a lot. Strip Mine, another land removal. Uh, tap for a colorless or tap sacrifice it destroy target land, land of any kind. Uh, so if my opponent has something like Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, uh, or he's playing elves and he's got Gaia's Cradle, uh, I can make that land go away. Reliquary Tower, uh, tap for a colorless. I have no maximum hand size. I've gotten to where I put this in pretty much every deck. Um, it's not as vital here, uh, and well, unless I've got land tax on the on the field and I'm drawing these extra lands instead of dumping them into my graveyard. I can just keep them in my hand. And then even when land tax is no longer triggering, I'll still have lands to play every turn. Uh, that or when I get a slow start and I don't play any spells my first couple of turns, uh, I can end up having to discard relevant cards. Uh, with this on the battlefield, I get to keep those. Uh, so I've got just a few stats for the deck. Uh, said there are, I mentioned the mana curve in this deck. Uh, there are 41 permanents. Uh, I'm not even considering my instants and sorceries for the mana curve, just because those are all things that I'm going to, for the most part, do a little bit later in the game anyway. But for my permanents to be able to establish my board presence, I have 41 permanents between creatures, enchantments, and artifacts. The average mana cost among those is 3.9, so almost four. Uh, that is definitely a slow starting deck uh, if things don't go extremely well. Uh, however, I'm hopefully able to get there because I have 10 different sources, different sources of ramp. Uh, that's the soul rings, the or uh, sorry, the Soul Ring, because there's only one. Uh, the Soul Ring, the Extra Planner Lens, the Ancient Tomb, 
things such as that. Uh, 10 sources of ramp to help me get to where if it's turn four, I'm able to access more than four mana is basically what ramp means. Uh, as I said earlier in this deck, I have had as much as six available on turn two. Uh, I've also, to be able to refill my hand, I have six instances of card draw. That's not very much card draw. Uh, the idea behind that is my spells are fairly expensive. Uh, I'm probably only going to cast one a turn anyway. Uh, I may occasionally do two. Uh, but I don't really just flood the board. The idea is my stuff's indestructible, so once it's on the board, I keep it there. Uh, like I said, that's, that's pretty much the deck as I've built it. Uh, you guys feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, also, as I've said, I will be at some point rebuilding this deck around Giada. Uh, she'll be the commander. Uh, so I'll post that video once it's done. It's I, I don't get any huge hurry to to do deck building uh, just because I don't have the means to go out, walk into a card shop, say, here's a card or here's a credit card. Give me 200 bucks worth of cards. Uh, and here's the list. Instead, I, I tend to at least start with what I've got and in most cases slowly build from there. Uh, I have most of the deck list for Giada already. It's it's actually most of it's right here. Uh, I will be taking out some of the board wipes. Um, with the idea of getting enough creatures on the board to gain enough life that if my opponents are having more creatures than me, I can still survive and then kill them because them not having enough flyers to block me. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'll let you guys know once, once I get that deck built, I think it's going to be a little more reliable uh, with this one. If I don't get the ramp, then the deck just does not work. I end up sitting there for four turns uh, the deck can sometimes recover from that because of the life gain. Uh, however, that's still not the kind of game I want to play. So, uh, in any case, that's it for today. Uh, you guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. Uh, that does help immensely. Uh, also, feel free to like as well as I said, comment on the video. And I'll see you guys next week. Have a good day.